Welcome back to the video tutorial on TK Gate. Today we are using TK Gate to develop what is one of the main components of any sequential circuit, which is a flip flop. So let's start by launching the application and by creating a new project called my FF, which stays for flip flop. Then we take two standard components, which are NOR gates, from the library, and we connect the output of the first one to one of the input to the second of the second one, in this way. Then we do the same with the output of the second one, which has to be connected to one of the inputs of the first one. So you see what we obtain is a symmetric circuit, which has now just two inputs, which are ready to receive external inputs. So to drive them, let us take two switches And then I take also two LEDs in order to show you the state of the output signals, which are the two outputs of the two NOR gates. So here is one, and here is the second one. As for the primary inputs, let me connect this one to the first switch and this one to the second one. Okay, now we have a, a pretty strange circuit uh, and we are ready to try to simulate it to see how it works. So let me launch the simulator and let's see what happens. Okay, now the simulation is running and uh, as you can see the two output signals are not determined. As you probably remember, yellow stays for undetermined, while red and light red represent ones and zeros, respectively. So let's see what happens if we change the input, if we put a one at this input, then these output signals goes to 1, while the other one goes to 0. And notice that uh, the input uh, pattern, which determined an undefined output, was 0, 0. Now, if I bring this signal, these input signals, back to 0, what happens uh, is that uh, the output doesn't change meaning that right now the output is indeed determinant and it is 0, 1. Now let's see what happens if I raise the other input signal. Now the output changes and uh, the output pattern becomes 1, 0. And again, if I bring this input signal back to 0, then the output doesn't change. Meaning that for input configuration 0, 0, I have three possible situations at the output. The first one, which is the one that we encountered when we launched the simulation, was undetermined. Then the second one was 0, 1, and the third one was 1, 0. So what's strange, what's new with this circuit is that uh, the output configuration is not uh, fully determined by the current input configuration. Rather, it also depends on the previous history of the circuit, which means that this circuit uh, has some form of memory in the sense that uh, it uh, holds an internal state uh, which determines uh, its behavior and that's the reason why 
when we launched the simulation, the output was undetermined just because the input, uh, um, sorry, not the input, but the internal state was not determined because the previous history was unknown. Then we started playing with the input signals so that we collected the previous history long enough to actually determine the state of the circuit and make it able to work properly from that point on. Okay? Okay, so let's assign names to these wires. In particular, we call this one S and we also want the S to appear. Then we call this other one R and we also assign names to the output signal. So we call this one Y and this other one Y prime. I'm oh, sorry. Y prime. Here we are. Okay, the circuit that we designed is called a set reset latch. And to point it out, let me use a frame. Okay, let me place this frame around this component in this way and let me also add a comment which is SR Lech which is the name of this very simple circuit here we are Okay, this circuit uh, does something which is uh, pretty simple and it is, uh, I hope, uh, um, much clearer now that we have assigned names uh, with the input and output signals because uh, this, we take this output signal as a, the main output called Y and S and R as primary inputs. And what happens uh, if we run the simulation again is that if we set the input to set signal then the output configuration becomes 1 y equal 1 and y prime equal 0 if we then bring both input signals back to 0 0 then the output configuration is maintained but if we raise the reset signal then the main output signal goes to zero and that's why this is called R which stays for reset and this is called S which stays for set because bringing this to one determines the um, output signal to take uh, value one and uh, Applying one to the reset signal actually brings uh, the output signal y to zero. And the reason why this is called y prime is that it is uh, always the complement of y in uh, all the three significant configurations that we have tried so far. While there are, there is also a fourth configuration which is one one at the output, which is this one, which uh, um, actually brings both output signals to zero and this is the only case in which the two output signals are not complementary to each other and we do not uh, like uh, this configuration because uh, as uh, we, we will see in a moment uh, we will only use the first three so just to point it out uh, let me um, add the Another comment here. Oops, sorry. Oh, I have to stop the simulation. Make 
comment where I want to explicitly say which is uh, the main uh, actually not why but I, I I want to say which is uh, the operating mode of the circuit for all possible input configurations. So for 0, 0, I have hold, meaning that uh, the output is maintained. For 0, 1, I have a reset and for one zero I have a set while for one one I have a double zero at the output uh, which is uh, not admitted for our purposes while reset means uh, y equals zero and y prime equal 1, while set means y equal 1 and y1 equal 0. Okay? So let me keep this in mind. And now we are ready to build something more on top of this fairly simple kernel. So what I want to do next is to add a clock. A clock is nothing but a synchronization signal. And uh, to this purpose, I add a couple of other gates, which are two AND gates. which work this way. So let me get rid of these two inputs here. Okay, let me take them out because I want to rename these wires here as S and R. And now I want these two AND gates to provide the inputs to the previous circuit in this way. Oops. Uh, this is tricky. OK, here we are. OK. Now I need a switch and I use this switch to drive one of the two inputs of the two AND gates while I use two new switches to drive the other input uh, of each AND gate in oops <laughs> too bad okay here we are in this way So let me align them, and here we are. Now I call this wire capital S, and this other one capital R, because they play the same role of the previous ones, which are the small 
s and small r that we had before. But right now, we also have another input uh, which uh, plays the role of a clock so that uh, I rename this wire clock. In particular, clock zero, because clock is uh, a, a name which has a specific meaning in TK gate, so we cannot name any signal clock. So I have to use clock zero if I want to use clock. And now the circuit that we have provides a gated input to the previous one, meaning that when the clock signal takes a value zero, then S and R take both value zero regardless of the primary inputs, because zero is a forcing element for the AND gates, so that if one of the input takes value zero, the output of the AND gate takes value zero regardless of the input. So if we want to simulate the circuit, we can easily verify that what happens is that when we change the input signals, nothing happens at the output unless we also raise the clock signal. And in this case, the primary inputs are allowed to affect the behavior of the circuit. Otherwise, they are not. So this also means that uh, if I bring the clock signal back to zero and uh, I play with the other two input signals, uh, the output is kept unchanged because uh, the actual inputs provided to the latch are still zero, zero, which is the hold configuration. So in practice, uh, when the clock is zero, then the input configuration of the latch is zero, zero, regardless of the other inputs. So if we want to assign a name to this new circuit, we can call it an SR flip-flop. So let me use a box again. I'm sorry, I have to stop the simulation and I add a frame around this new circuit which, contain, which contains the previous one and I call it SR flip-flop. Here we are. And I want also to point out uh, which is uh, the simplify the truth table of this new circuit, which now has uh, three inputs rather than just two. So I add a new comment, and in the new comment uh, I can say this, that I have clock zero, S and R, and then I want to show you which are the corresponding values of uh, small s and small r and which is uh, the operating mode corresponding to this uh, specific configuration. Okay, so when clock is zero, then regardless of the values of capital S and capital R, small s and small r are both zero. So this means that we are in a hold operating mode. When this takes value one, instead we have zero, zero, which is still hold, zero, one, which corresponds to zero, 1 in the inner 
signals as well, which is a reset. When we have one zero, we have a set command, and when we have one and one, we have again one and one, and we don't want this configuration to be used. Okay? Now, this is a comment uh, which tells us how the SR flip-flop works, and now we do something more on top of it. And in particular, what we do is just adding an inverter and removing one of the two inputs. So let me get rid of this and also take an inverter from the library. And uh, I place the inverter in this position here in order to have this signal generated by the inverter which takes the input from signal S. And I rename signal S to D and now I call this new circuit uh, D flip flop. So I draw another frame around it, which is this one. I also add the comment and uh, let me also show the truth table of this new circuit so right now we have this simplified situation here in which we have uh, just uh, two input signals the first one called clock zero and the other one called D then we have uh, S and R which are the two inputs uh, of the SR flip-flop then small s and small r and then the operating mode Okay, so we have just four possible input configurations. In this one, we have zero one, oops, sorry, I need also to specify, well, okay, I, I, I don't repeat the, um, the, clo the clock here because uh, this would uh, uh, entail adding an extra column uh, which uh, will be for sure equal to the, this one. So clock zero is uh, the original one, so I don't need to uh, repeat it uh, here at the input uh, of the SR flip-flop because it's the same signal. Then this also, uh, actually this doesn't correspond to a zero one, but rather it corresponds to a zero zero, which stays for hold just because of the clock. In this other situation here, I have one zero instead, but then it becomes zero zero internally. And this is again a hold condition. And then here I have zero one, which corresponds 
to 0, 1, even in the internal latch. And this is a reset command. While in this case, I have a 1, 0, which propagates internally and determines a set command. OK? So as you see, in this case, we, we get rid of the um, undesired input configuration, which was uh, 1, 1, just because right now the two input signals of the SR flip-flop and of the SR latch are always provided by two signals which are derived from the same signal by means of an inverter. So this means that we um, imposed the two input signals to be always different from each other. So the only configurations that we have at the input are 0, 1 or 1, 0. But on the other hand, we still have a 0, 0 configuration, which is not provided by this primary input, but rather by the clock signal. OK? So let me keep it here. And here is our circuit, which works as a flip-flop. Now we want to encapsulate this flip-flop into a new module which is called D flip-flop with another specification which is level sensitive. In fact, this refers to the fact that this flip-flop is sensitive to the input whenever the clock signal takes value 1. So let me make a module instance which is called my D flip-flop LS, which stays for level sensitive. And I add two ports to the circuit, an input port, which is called D. an input port which is called CRK which stays for clock and an output port which is called Y. I could uh, also add another port called Y prime but I don't need it uh, for the sake uh, of this um, of this tutorial. So let me take it as an interface and uh, I needed to set the interface in order to find it inside and then I want also to copy uh, oops, sorry I want to copy or but the flip-flop in order to paste it inside this component so I do it this way, then I go inside and I paste it here. And here we are. So right now we have an implementation of this flip-flop and we need to get rid of these LEDs and uh, switches and to replace them with the actual ports of the component uh, that we are designing. So let me at the module input, which is D. Oops, I have a signal called D, so I have to get rid of this before being allowed to name uh, another signal D. So let me change the name of this signal. I can call it, uh, for instance, uh, S, uh, as it was the original name of this signal then I rename it in D in order to have it corresponding to the name of the port. Then I need to do the same for Y. So I 
get rid of this okay I call it uh, uh, well I have to make sure that I used a small y rather than a capital one but I think this is the case so I call this uh, y net and then it will be renamed and I need to add the module output uh, which is called y okay I think this is not uh, the proper value I need to double check uh, probably it's correct but I'm not sure so we need uh, to make sure that I use the a small y here and here as well I think this is the case but in case uh, something uh, goes wrong uh, we know that we need to double check this okay so this is the output signal then we remove this lead we don't need it and we need also another module input which is CRK here we are we get rid of this and connect this one to these two signals and then I need also to connect this to this one okay here we are okay let's go at the top level where we can remove this circuit here or better we can keep uh, it just uh, for uh, making sure that it works exactly as the module that we just built so let me connect the D input of the module to this uh, switch and the clock input of the module to this clock signal and then I use an additional LED to show the value of the output signal now I am ready to run the simulation okay the simulation runs properly meaning that uh, the name that I assign to the ports are the same that I used for the input and output uh, com component uh, inside the module and then I'm uh, ready to test the circuit so if I change the input uh, signal D without uh, rising uh, the clock signal nothing happened if I bring D to 1 then as soon as I raise the clock signal the output signal of both circuits goes to 1 if I bring the clock signal back to 0 the output is maintained regardless of the value of D but if then I bring the clock signal back to 1 when D takes value 0 then the output will be reset okay so it works properly having verified that it works properly I can get rid of this components and uh, I can even cut these uh, wires here and I can uh, use this circuit uh, to build something else in particular what I want to build uh, is another component uh, which is called uh, my D flip-flop uh, edge triggered because I want to build a component uh, which uh, actually makes the output signal dependent on the inputs just when there is a rising edge of the clock so in the uh, exact instant in which the clock signal goes from 0 to 1 so to this purpose I need to use two of these components that we just defined so I will use two edge triggered flip flop level sensitive sorry flip flops of the same type to build what is called an edge triggered flip flop and um, let me do it 
as a module directly. So I create a new module instance which is called my D flip flop edge triggered. The interface of this new component will be exactly the same, so having uh, an input signal called D, another input signal called CLK, and an output signal called Y. Then I set the interface of this module and I bring these two components inside the module. Here they are. Then I remove the LED and I add the input and output ports. Module input D uh, again, I have a D0 here, so I have to rename this first, like for instance a small d, and this becomes capital D. Then I have uh, the clock. And finally, I have Y. OK, now the primary output uh, will be connected to the second flip-flop, while the clock will be connected in this way. First, I connect the clock to the second flip-flop, and I use an inverter. that can be rotated this way to provide a clock signal to the first flip-flop in this way. Then the last thing that I need to do is just to connect this primary input to the input of the first flip-flop and to connect the output of the first flip-flop to the input of the second one in this way. And this is what is called a master slave edge triggered flip flop. So let's see what happens. Let me try to describe the behavior of this circuit. What happens now is that uh, when the clock is zero, then this circuit here is not sensitive to its input uh, while this flip-flop here is indeed sensitive to its input because zero goes through an inverter in order to provide the clock to the first flip-flop. So this means that when clock is zero, this is one. So if I have, for instance, a one here, this one propagates through this inner signal small d. But it does not propagate anymore because uh, at this point uh, there is uh, a zero at the clock signal of the second flip-flop uh, which blocks this input. When the clock signal goes from zero to one, what happens uh, is that uh, the first flip-flop becomes unsensitive to its inputs uh, while uh, the second one becomes sensitive to its inputs. So this means that the input one, which uh, propagated up to this point, is allowed to propagate to the primary output. But in the meantime, the first flip-flop blocks the propagation of uh, any other input change, so that the actual value taken by output signal Y is the value that input signal D took when the um, clock signal went from 0 to 1. 
And that's the reason why this kind of flip-flop uh, is called edge triggered, because it is indeed triggered by the edge. So as soon as we have a rising edge on the clock signal, this circuit uh, takes a sample of the value of the input and propagates it to its output. But then it keeps the output unchanged until there is a complete cycle of the clock signal which has to go back to zero and then again have another rising edge in order for the output signal to possibly change depending on the current value of the input. Okay, let's go back to the top level and add the switches and the LEDs that we need in order to double check the behavior by means of simulations. So we take two switches, we connect them to the two input ports of this model and we put a LED here to show the value of the output signal. Okay. Here we are. Simulation, begin simulation. Okay. Now, if I play with input signal D, nothing happens uh, and the output uh, is still undefined because uh, there are no previous events uh, which uh, uh, can be used by the simulation to determine uh, the internal state uh, and uh, the actual value of the output signal. But as soon as I raise the clock signal, then the output signal is determined. And in this case, uh, it is uh, reset, meaning that uh, it takes value zero, just because uh, there was uh, a zero at the input uh, when the clock went from zero to one. Now, if I play with this input signal, it does not affect the output uh, just because uh, there is uh, no transition, no rising transition at the clock, uh, even if the clock uh, is uh, one. So notice that uh, in our previous case, uh, uh, using just uh, um, a level sensitive flip-flop, having a clock at one would allow the input signal to affect the output directly. While in this case, this is not uh, possible just because we have two um, flip-flops which uh, are cascaded and driven by opposite phases of the clock. So when the first one allows the input signal to go through, the other one blocks it and vice versa. So I can keep changing the input signal without affecting the output, but if I bring the clock signal back to zero and then again back to one, as soon as there is a rising edge, click. What happens is that uh, the new value of the input is sampled. And now if I change the clock signal again and I have a new rising edge, in this case nothing changes at the output just because the input D didn't change. So this means that the input is uh, resampled, but the value, the sampled value is the same. Okay? So this is the behavior of, a, of an edge triggered flip-flop which samples the input signal at the rising edges of the clock. Okay. This concludes this tutorial and thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye-bye.